Thank you. I appreciate that applause. And uh, <laughs> you gotta tell you when you get it, you know. Uh, I, boy, isn't that, don't we have some great weather out here today? I'll tell you, the Lord's been blessing us. Uh, we had great Sunday, as David mentioned uh, last week, and so um, some of our folks are at, uh, uh, in India right now, and they've already had some baptisms, and they've been uh, they've already been feeding people and helping in, in some of the poor areas there, and met with our ambassadors and our team, and so they're they're rolling over in India as we speak, and they're ten and a half hour time difference. Now, why the half, I don't know, but 10 and a half hour time difference uh, from us. So uh, be, sh- be sure and continue to pray for our team that's there. As well as uh, Danny and Beverly Dobbs are down in Florida, and they've taken relief supplies that a lot of you have, have donated and get them for the hurricane. And they're in Fort Myers at the uh, Gulf Coast Church of Christ, and they've set up the shop there. So we're helping a lot of folks there too and uh, heard from them a couple of times since they've been gone and uh, appreciate so much uh, some people going, some people giving, do, everybody doing their part to make sure these kinds of things are happening. And again, I want to thank you for the, uh, we'd, want, we'd hoped to get $100,000 on One Kingdom Sunday. We got $102,000 and praise the Lord for that, right? Amen. <laughs> So I thought we'd pass the plates around. It's got money in it. You can take the 2000 back. No, no, I was just kidding. <laughs> we'll roll that forward and use it how best we can, right? Uh, have you ever gone to a church where they just give you money? Uh, I hadn't found that one yet. But, uh, but we do, because that's why we do the first Sunday contribution, to help one another. Because the Bible says if, if you see a brother and sister in need, you take care of one another. That's what you do. And that's what Forever Family uh, does. So, uh, also, uh, by the way, coming up in the spring, a cappella uh, reunion concert is going to be here at our building. Uh, many of you may have may not heard of them. They were here years ago, uh, quite a number of times. I know Keith well, and they will do a great concert. There is a code on our app. If you go to our app to get tickets cheaper than what they sell them for the host congregation through a certain date i think the date's on there maybe the 18th of the month or something but uh, that'll be on a sunday night in the spring and uh we'll pack this place full and they'll have a great great uh, time praising the lord together so be sure and uh stick that on your calendar way ahead of time and get your tickets and it'll be a it'll be a, i promise you it'll be a great blessing when i was youth minister here i had them in here 13 years in a row we never cease to pay for everything just by uh just by people uh, donating because uh, they just wanted to come in here and be a part of some exciting things happening and so uh, uh, I'm be, I'll be glad to have those guys back with us okay I've got a, a reader Miss Reagan Rochelle was, was going to come up here and read for me come on up here sweetie now she likes cheer she likes uh, dance but the thing I'm interested in most is that you like softball so I'm a softball guy. So uh, thank you for being here and for reading this scripture for us, okay? All right, go right ahead. You can find this in Colossians, ver- Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. For he has rescued us from the dominion of dark- darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption for forgiveness and sins amen thank you sweetie you did great that's awesome that is awesome well she told you where to turn Colossians chapter 1 we're starting a new series why Jesus Uh, you'll have to put up with me today for a little bit of the first part of chapter one then next week Phil's going to preach for us in the last half of the supremacy of Christ and so we're excited about that and we want to start digging into uh, uh, digging into our text today Colossians chapter one 
First, Paul identifies himself as the writer of the letter and uh, that Timothy's with him and they're writing to some brothers of holy and faithful at Colossae. Now, I like that because he calls them holy and faithful, yet he's going to challenge their holiness and faithfulness later on. And because, you know, because we're not always where we need to be doesn't mean we're not right with God. Got it? And so he, uh, he writes this to them. He says, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Then he starts in verse 3, and verse 3 through 6 is a thanksgiving for the church. If you want to break this down, I broke it down like this if it's worth something to you. Verse 3 through 6 is thanksgiving to the church. Verse 7 and 8 is talk about the church. Some of you are already doing that uh, in a positive way, I'm sure. And then verse 9 through 12 is pray about the church. So uh, let's, let's dig into this a little bit, all right? Let's do verse 3 through 6 first. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you all over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. So first, out, first thing he does, he says, when, I, when we pray to thank God, we thank God for you. And we thank God for you because of a couple of different things. We, we see your faith in Christ. We see your love for each other, Right? And we see your hope for the future. And all that comes by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Love God, love others, and share Jesus. I heard that somewhere before, David. That's what it's all about. And he says that this gospel is uh, uh, going all around the world. This word of truth, God's grace, he says, in all of its truth, is not only bearing fruit, it's bearing fruit worldwide globally and it's bearing fruit locally and so this good news of Jesus has reached these people and it's made a difference in their life and now all of a sudden when Paul prayed Paul's not even he's not even met these folks matter of fact you can't find the city of if you go to where the city of Colossae was now today it's just a big hump of dirt they, matter of fact, they have plans to uh, excavate that thing and see what's under there. But, but it's just a little town that disappeared. Wasn't a big place. But it was in a valley there where a lot of other churches were planted. Uh, Ephesus, Laodicea, Hierapolis. And the church is here in Colossae this time, it's growing. And I like the fact that he says it's bearing fruit. And it's bearing fruit all over the world. And when I think about the things that we're involved in, uh, uh, I, I get the text every day from uh, India. I get texts from Peru. I get texts from uh, uh, folks in Colombia, from Ricardo. And, and the, the gospel is be out there being preached all over the world. Now, we still got some places in the world we hadn't reached yet. We got to get there. But we don't ever want to lose sight that we've got something that needs to go to every ethnic group. But we always have to remind ourselves that it goes right here in our own town to our own neighbors first. It was Bill that told me, and I'm sure you, the church, the light that shines brightest or farthest shines brightest at home. So that good news is something we have to always make sure we're on target with keeping the gospel. He says it's bearing fruit all over. And the, res the result, man, they're being talked about. So he's thankful to him when he prays. And then look what it says in verse 7. That you learn this. They learned the gospel from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who has also told us of your love in the Spirit. So Epaphras, he's not only told them the gospel, he's went back and told Paul and all these other brothers how the gospel's bearing fruit in their life. He's talking about the church. I love it when people talk about the church in this way, right? Instead of walking out of an assembly saying, I didn't like that, or my sermon was too short, or uh, I don't know, I've never really heard that comment, but I'm sure someone has said it sometimes. 
Or they're always asking for money, or I can't believe we did this. Instead of talking about, I tell you what, I love to hear when I walk out in the front and someone says, "Hey, here's a visitor. I've got we got a Bible study next Thursday with this person. I had a great Bible study yesterday. Uh, did you hear? By the way, I'll talk about the church a little bit. Uh, between services, Phil baptized a young woman today. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Some, uh, a guy asked me one time, said, so, Mike, where do you see the church five years from now? Like, where, I mean, like, where are we going? I'm not going anywhere. If we're teaching the gospel and baptizing people, we're already there. God, we're there. What happens is we need to be content with what God has called us to do. We get wrapped up in the minority outside edge of religious activity and it'll distract us from the main thing. You got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing in this book is Jesus. Amen, brother. Right on cue. Look, he's calling right now. For those in the other assembly, probably there was a phone call. So I don't know, maybe yours rang too. He talked about this church. He was excited about this church. I'll tell you what, I love, when I go off to preach somewhere, I know they probably get tired of it, but I can't wait to go off and preach and tell them about Watch Ferry Road. I tell them about brothers and sisters I know that totally turned their life around through Celebrate Recovery and what a great ministry that is to broken people in our community. I love telling about Reengage. I love telling about uh, uh, all the different ministries that are going on. I, I love them hearing about the faith is growing and producing fruit and bearing fruit. The gospel is doing this. The gospel does it. I don't do this. David doesn't plan this. It's not a strategy that exists that somehow or another we make the right decision. We build like some kind of strategy thing and the church grows. No, the gospel makes the church grow. Uh, not my planning and not my intellect and not my effort, but the gospel itself has the power to change people's lives. <laughs> Stay on target, brothers. Stay on target. See, Epaphras is out there just talking about the church. And I want you to talk about it too. If you found Jesus here, when you go out in your community, this you talk about it, you tell them. Tell them how you came to know Jesus. If you can't study with them, tell them, say, hey, I know a guy who can. Come and find me. Find David. Find Chad. We'll study the gospel with you. The story of the death, burial, and resurrection that changes people's hearts and lives. Tell me the old, old story. It still has the power to change lives. Well, in verse 9 through 12, you get Paul's prayer or petition about the church. Look what he says, first of all, in verse 9. For this reason, this reason, the gospel and the changed lives that's been going on, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. The first thing you have in verse 9 is you have spiritual intelligence. You've got knowledge, you've got wisdom, you've got understanding so that you can really know exactly what God's will is in your life. And you and I cannot consistently know God's will if we're not reading and studying the will of God right here in the Bible. I had a conversation this week with the young man that was out in front of our building and he was determined to tell me how God called him to do something and, and how God had confirmed it by something else that happened in his life and by this. And he had a lot of scripture with him, which I really did appreciate. But as I got to talking with him, I could tell his thinking wasn't quite right. And so I really prayed for that young man this week. Uh, I want him to find the one thing the good news of Jesus, and get focused. He's so unfocused because of all kinds of things, mental illness, drugs and alcohol, other things that have been trauma in his life, that to get just totally focused on the good news of Jesus is difficult for him to do. Understanding God's will. Having wisdom. 
You know, the Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask for it. God will give it. We need prayers for wisdom. We have God's will. We pray through the Holy Spirit for wisdom. We have understanding, and we stay busy about being centered on the good news of Jesus. In verse 10, he talks about obedience of his word, or some of your verses will say, walk worthy. Look what he says. And we pray this in order. Here's why we're praying it. In order that you may live a life or walk worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God. Now look what he says there. There's an obedience to his word. There's a walking, a direction in life as you follow. Now that you know God's will and you look at his word, you follow it with obedience. And you grow in knowledge of God. Well, how do we grow? You grow by being in David's Bible class. And you open up your Bible and you dig in there. You grow by being in some of the other classes that are offered. By being Phil's. And I think there's one more now started, right, David? Kingdom Lives class. How long has it been since you've been to a Bible class? This is not a statement of guilt for attendance. I'm just saying if the opportunity is is right there in front of us to grow, why wouldn't we take advantage of it? Growing. On top of that, if you don't go now, it's simply all you got to do is push a button on your telephone or your computer, and you can take every class we have. There's all kinds of things out there. Grow. I cannot grow if I am not nourishing myself with the Word of God. I cannot say this enough. There, uh, 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 there, there is such a need for, once again, people to dive into the Word of God and let the truth that God's written permeate our heart and our minds and our lives. I used to say, because of how I was raised, that we shouted truth and whispered grace, and I think that was probably true, and it led to a lot of legalism. But I'll tell you what, the opposite happens sometimes when we, when we shout grace and there's a shallowness to grace that, that all of a sudden goes around to all kinds of religious groups. And yet we don't dig into the truth to find out really what God's Word says. We have to have that balance of both of those things taking place. And so, yes, we're saved by the grace of God, but we grow by His grace. But we also grow by His Word. And we need to spend time in the Word of God. We've got some great teachers here. Take advantage of it. That's, this is Paul's prayer for this group. That they bear fruit in every good work and grow in the knowledge of God. See, sometimes we want more for the church than God wants. Now, I want you to think about that statement. What's the highest priority to you in an assembly? Is it that we have a great worship time? Is it that we have a great facility to have? What's the priority? Sometimes we want more for the church than God wants. He wants sanctification and serving. Holy people serving like Jesus. That's what God wants. So whatever we have going, we got to make sure that the bottom line is this takes place. Otherwise, we're just dressing up a bunch of religious people for a while. Now he says in verse 11, this verse 11 and 12 is we are, he's praying to be empowered by his presence. Look what he says. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. So let's talk about this just for a minute. This empowered by his presence. The, the presence of God is with us and in us. I have Not only do I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, I have the Holy Spirit's words in front of me, and I have Holy Spirit-filled people around me. So I, I'm empowered by his presence. 
And that empowerment gives us strength to endure. This endurance has to do with getting through tough circumstances in life. Uh, if you come to Jesus, not everything's going to get okay and better. Matter of fact, sometimes it's going to get harder and worse. But we have to endure because our faith is in the greatest thing of all, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So you see, enduring has to do with circumstance. And then he says the next thing is not only do we have endurance, but we have patience. Endurance is, uh, typically endurance is about circumstance and patience about people. You ever have that one person that just, you know, they're the temptation in your life to be angry or to be mad or to be, you know, you have that, that one you just can't get along with. That one. People sometimes are a threat to us when we have no patience. Patient with people. Endurance, patience, and then he says joyful thanksgiving. It's thanksgiving to the Father for what God has done, is doing, and will do. Joyful thanksgiving. You know what? When, when I can endure tough circumstances... And when I can be patient with others as I grow and learn. And I can have a spirit of joy and thanksgiving to God because the gospel's done something in my life. All of a sudden my vocabulary changes. It's not near as negative as it used to be. Because instead, I'm not complaining. I'm not arguing. I'm not seeing the negative thing of everything anymore. Because all of a sudden on my mind is a joyful thanksgiving. Because of the blessings that I have in Christ. Now, look what else he says here. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. I have a future. I have an inheritance. Anybody here ever inherited anything? Raise your hand. You can raise your hand. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, I inherited a few things. I've got an old clock. It doesn't work. I inherited. So glad my brother gave that to me. Right? No, I actually wanted it. I have an old lantern that I inherited that hung on my wall in my house where I grew up. That my, and, and the reason I wanted it, my mom used it. She grew up very poor. My mom used it to read by. They didn't have electricity in her house. She used that to read and do her schoolwork when she was a little girl. I wanted that. Inheritance. I got a little cash when my folks died. Is that bad to talk about stuff like that? My dad had it buried in, the, in, the, in, a, in a hole in the ground behind the dog box. Two jars, a mason jar had a rope tied around it. When you pulled that out, it pulled out another jar, tied a rope was around it, and there was some money in there. And I ain't telling you how much, it ain't none of your business. <laughs> Tommy, now you know why I struggle with banking ideas, right? Okay. Inheritance. But I cannot imagine... Romans 8 says, whatever Jesus gets, I get. Whatever inheritance is there is ours. I have a future because of the gospel. Look what Jesus did for us in verse 13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. He used to have power and dominion over you. Darkness did. He rescued us and brought us, or one version says, I think the old King James says, translated us. The, the word there actually means to take a, one group of people, bring them out of one thing, and put them in another. You bring them out of one country, you put them in another country. That was the idea. He brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. So he rescued us and he pulled us out of darkness, out of that kingdom, and placed us into the kingdom of, of Jesus Christ. Rescued. Brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness 
of sins. All that through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Now, let me just, I want to read to you the words that have surrounded the gospel through this whole text. He mentions all the way in this thing. This is all, all about the gospel. There's faith, love, hope, gospel, truth, grace, fruit, knowledge, wisdom, power, understanding, endurance, patience, thanksgiving, qualified, rescued, translated, redeemed, and forgiven. Amen. That's a great, great word of how the gospel can change your life. Today, if you're not right with God, my desire, even more importantly, God's desire, because he didn't wish any man to be lost, is for you to walk down this aisle, confess Jesus is Lord, repent, be baptized into Christ, and start a brand new walk, a walk of sanctification and serving. If you've already done that, but somehow or another, Satan has distracted you from the main thing, and you've got wrapped up in a host of all kinds of other religious stuff, look, get back to what's simple. The death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus died. He rescued you. He rescued me from the dominion of darkness. He put me in the kingdom of light. He redeemed me. He's forgiven me. And this is a whole family full of messed up, broken people who are redeemed and forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the family we have right here. You can be in on that. If you have a need today, would you can, uh, come while we stand and sing? Thank you.